Hi there, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Gardener, and thank you for listening. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling. It's December 2nd. Today, we'll celebrate the German botanist who used gardens as classrooms. We'll also learn about the botanist who was a passionate advocate of forests. We'll recognize the efforts of a key founder of the Linnaean Society. And we'll hear a quote about December from the creator of Peter Pan. We'll grow that garden library with a book that helps you maximize your smallest spaces. And then we'll wrap things up with the story of a witty English American writer and illustrator who wrote about cats and the natural world. But first, here's a quick reminder to head on over to the website for the show over at thedailygardener.org, where you can sign up for the free Friday newsletter. If you do that, you'll get a personal update from me every Friday in your email inbox, along with garden-related items for your calendar. You'll get all of the Grow That Garden Library featured books from the podcast for the week. They'll all be there in a nice little list for you along with gardener gift ideas, garden-inspired recipes, and exclusive updates regarding the show. So just head on over to The Daily Gardener and sign up there. For today's curated news, there was a post that was recently featured by Garden Design, and it was called Rain Garden Design and Benefits by Adam Arvidson. This post gives a ton of great ideas for designing your rain garden, if that's something you're thinking about, for 2021. A rain garden is a shallow planted depression that's designed to hold rainwater, help with runoff, and improve the overall function of your garden. And if you'd like to check out this post on rain garden design and benefits or any of my curated news articles or original blog posts for yourself, you're in luck because I share all of it with the listener community in the free Facebook group for the show. It's called the Daily Gardener Community. So you don't need to take notes or hunt down links. The next time you're on Facebook, just search for Daily Gardener Community where you'd search for a friend and request to join. I'd love to meet you in the group. Here's today's brevities. Today is the birthday of the German theologian and educator Johann Julius Hecker, who was born on this day, December 2nd, 1707. Johann recognized that a classical education didn't work for everyone, so he founded secondary schools in Germany that prepared students for practical jobs and callings. Johann referred to his schools as, quote, the seedbeds of the state from which the young, like trees from a nursery, could be transplanted into their proper places. Johann's work attracted the attention of the King of Prussia, Frederick the Great. King Frederick encouraged Johann to expand his efforts, so Johann installed gardens near his schools to teach hands-on botany. Johann's gardens included vegetables, herbs, and fruit trees. And after realizing that the production of silk and the care of silkworms would probably impress the king, Johann strategically added the mulberry tree to his list of crops. Like the monarch butterfly and milkweed, silkworms biologically evolved with their only food source, the mulberry tree. Thanks to Johann's vision to grow the school garden, both the teachers and his students tended to a large mulberry plantation and mastered the culture of silk and mulberries. And it was on this day, December 2nd, 1758, that the Scottish botanist Nicholas Alexander Dalzell was preparing to leave Karachi, the capital of the province of Sindh, Pakistan. Before he left, Nicholas sent a box containing nearly 80 plant specimens collected in Sindh to William Joseph Hooker. 
Nicholas also described a drug from India that he had received for the Karachi Museum, known as Kala Musli, or Black Root. Now, Nicholas drew a sketch of Black Root for Hooker, and his drawing looked a little bit like a jellyfish. Nicholas explained that Black Root was highly valued as an aphrodisiac, and it had puzzled several botanists in the past. After studying the sample, Nicholas concluded that the specimen was actually the root of Cala aromatica. Today, we know that this aromatic rhizomatic plant is a perennial herb native to India's sub-Himalayan regions. The rhizomes contain a fragrant essential oil that's used in perfumes and cosmetics. And in India, the plant is used to treat joint pain and skin infections. Finally, Nicholas ended his letter with a little critique of William Hooker's son. Nicholas had received a copy of Joseph Dalton Hooker's Flora Indica, and he wrote, I am rather angry. Tell Dr. Hooker with my best compliments at his saying there were no large forests in Sindh. Well, from his own time in Sindh, Nicholas knew firsthand that there were nearly a hundred forests in the province, with most of them averaging three miles in length and one to two miles in breadth. Today, we know that forests meant a great deal to Nicholas. In fact, Nicholas Dalzell is remembered for his efforts to conserve forests. Nicholas was one of the very first botanists to recognize the link between forests and rainfall. As forests were eliminated, Nicholas realized that the evaporation cycle was disrupted, which resulted in less rainfall and drier conditions over the surrounding areas, sometimes leading to drought. And today is the birthday of the English botanist and founder of the Linnaean Society, James Edward Smith, who was born on this day, December 2nd, 1759. In 1784, with encouragement from Joseph Banks, James shrewdly purchased Carl Linnaeus's entire private collection and works. Like me, if you've ever wondered why Linnaeus's private materials didn't stay in Sweden and ended up in England, well, the answer is because of James Edward Smith. After Carl's death, James acted quickly, and he made an offer too good to refuse to Linnaeus's widow. By the time the king of Sweden learned of the purchase, he was too late. And although the king sent his agents to intercept the ship carrying Carl's personal repository before it reached London, he was too late. Once the collection was securely in his possession, James founded the Linnaean Society, and he also served as the first president. The Linnaean Society is the oldest biological society in the world. During the 18th and 19th centuries, the society was an essential hub for scientific progress. And here's a little remembered fact about James Edward Smith. He was the private botany tutor to England's Queen Charlotte and her four daughters. In Unearthed Words, here's a quote from the Scottish novelist, playwright, and the creator of Peter Pan, James Matthew Barry. God gave us memory so that we might have roses in December. It's time to grow that garden library with today's book, Small Space Garden Ideas by Philippa Pearson. This book came out in 2014, and the subtitle is Create Your Dream Garden on a Windowsill, Wall, Step, Staircase, Balcony, Porch, or Patio. In this book, Philippa writes for gardeners with small gardens tiny gardens, or no garden at all. 
If you have little to no room for gardening, get inspired to make over your minimal indoor or outdoor space with more than 40 inventive projects to grow plants where space is tight. Philippa's ideas are a repository of the very best indoor and outdoor garden inspiration and ideas for the severely space-challenged gardener. With Philippa's help and some imagination, there is no reason why anyone should not be able to garden. Best of all, Philippa's solutions won't break the bank, which means you'll have more money to spend on plants. This book is 256 pages of smart and innovative ways to make the little spaces feel bountiful and gratifying in addition to colorful and thrifty. You can get a copy of Small Space Garden Ideas by Philippa Pearson and support the show using the Amazon link in today's show notes for around $3.00 which makes it one of my secret Santa suggestions for this holiday season. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. Today is the birthday of the English-American writer, artist, and illustrator Oliver Herford, who was born on this day, December 2nd, 1860. Oliver's wit was sharp and came through in his writing. He wrote, A woman's mind is cleaner than a man's. She changes it more often. And he also wrote, A rolling stone gathers no moss, but it gains a certain polish. A cat lover, Oliver wrote a few charming books about cats and kittens. Here's a little cat-inspired verse that Oliver wrote about pussy willows and bulrush. I sometimes think the pussy willows gray are angel kittens who have lost their way. And every bulrush on the river bank, a cattail from some lovely cat astray. And finally, here's a charming verse from Oliver about the dark month of December. I heard a bird sing in the dark of December, a magical thing and sweet to remember. We are nearer to spring than we were in September. I heard a bird sing in the dark of December. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener, and remember, for a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced in lovely Wyoming, Minnesota, with the help of Paige Mance, Brooke Beerbaum, Kiana Rayleigh, Maddie Doyle, Natalie Decker, and Eric Begay. You can find The Daily Gardener on all your favorite social media. You can follow the show on Instagram, and listeners always have a standing invitation to join the free Facebook group for the show. Just search for Daily Gardener Community the next time you're on Facebook and request to join. All the stories and books that are featured on the show can be found over at thedailygardener.org, thedailygardener.org. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my free Friday newsletter. Last but not least, you can share your own gardener greetings on the show by emailing me at jennifer at thedailygardener.org. I'm your host, Jennifer Ebling, and as always, have a great day in the garden, and we'll see you tomorrow.